Many people believe that Egypt was the first place on Earth where humans built pyramids. But a question emerges when we look toward the central coast of Peru. How did a prehistoric society without writing manage to raise its own monumental pyramid around 3000 to 2600 BCE? As archaeological research examines this structure, it becomes clear that the builders of Corral developed construction methods entirely distinct from the stone blocks used in Egypt. Instead of carved rock, they relied on a combination of adobe, river stones and shikras, cotton fiber bags filled with tightly packed stones that formed a stable internal core. During the initial stages of construction, the builders prepared a flat surface near the Serpa River, selecting a location where the soil could support large ceremonial platforms. Once the ground was leveled, workers created retaining walls made of stone to outline the perimeter of the pyramid and establish the shape of its stepped design. As the outer walls rose, Groups of builders transported shikras filled with stones collected from the riverbed. These shikras were placed systematically inside the structure, forming a compact fill that added mass and stability. This method allowed rapid expansion of the platform while preventing structural collapse during earthquakes, a frequent challenge in the Andean region. During this period, the absence of metal tools did not hinder progress. Builders shaped adobe with simple wooden instruments and used ropes made from plant fibers to transport materials. Their knowledge of weight distribution, moisture control and structural reinforcement reveals a level of engineering sophistication unexpected for a society without written records. As construction advanced, layers of adobe, stone and shikras formed sequences that archaeologists today can read like geological strata. Each layer corresponds to a building phase associated with ritual renewal. These cycles indicate that the pyramid was not built in a single event. Instead, it was expanded repeatedly across generations each time reinforcing its cultural significance. <sighs> Meanwhile, the labor system that sustained this construction depended on the cooperation between inland farmers and coastal fishers. Cotton grown in the valley produced both nets for fishing and the fiber used to make shikras Marine resources supported inland workers, creating an interdependent network that supplied continuous manpower for the pyramid's development. As the structure reached its prominent height, access ramps connected the lower plaza to elevated platforms. These architectural features guided ceremonial movement and symbolized hierarchical spatial organization. Despite the absence of defensive elements, the pyramid's visibility across the valley suggests that it functioned as a focal point for social and ritual gatherings. As the ceremonial importance of the pyramid increased, additional construction phases expanded its volume and redefined its platforms. Builders added new layers of adobe and stone, reinforcing earlier walls and covering older stairways. This continual modification demonstrates that the monument served as a long-term ritual project, maintained and renewed by successive generations. As archaeologists examine these layers, evidence of burned materials and carefully placed offerings reveals that each construction phase involved formal ceremonies. 
These events likely marked leadership transitions, seasonal cycles, or moments of social reorganization. The integration of ritual within the construction process reinforces the idea that building the pyramid was as meaningful as using it. As the population surrounding the monument grew, coordinated labor became essential. Groups transported materials along designated routes, ensuring a steady flow of adobe, stone, and shikras. The scale of this effort indicates a system capable of mobilizing workers without coercion, relying instead on established networks of reciprocity among neighboring settlements. At the same time, the builders adapted their techniques to environmental conditions. They selected stones that resisted heat expansion, prepared adobe mixtures with precise moisture levels, and aligned walls to reduce erosion from coastal winds. These decisions reveal practical knowledge accumulated through repeated construction cycles and shared across the community. As structural complexity increased, the builders integrated ventilation ducts, recessed spaces, and controlled access points within the pyramid. Mm. These features indicate an awareness of airflow, temperature regulation, and spatial organization. Their presence demonstrates that the monument was designed not only for external visibility, but also for specific activities conducted within its platforms. As centuries passed, repeated expansions transformed the original structure into a massive ceremonial center. Older construction became encased within new platforms, preserving the architectural record of social change. This gradual growth highlights a continuous cultural investment in the pyramid, maintaining its role as a symbolic and administrative reference point. As modern analysis compares Karal's pyramid to early monuments around the world, it becomes clear that the Andean builders established a unique engineering tradition. Their reliance on shikras allowed them to construct massive, flexible structures adapted to seismic conditions. This innovation distinguishes Karal as one of the earliest examples of earthquake-resistant monumental architecture. As the narrative approaches the present, the pyramid remains a key source of information about prehistoric knowledge in the Andes. Its construction techniques, preservation of layered building phases, and lack of military features provide insight into a society that advanced through cooperation, environmental adaptation, and shared ritual practice. As this story comes to an end, the Pyramid of Corral remains a clear example of how a prehistoric society achieved monumental construction through cooperation and long-term planning. Built without writing or metal tools, it shows that organized labor and shared ritual purpose were enough to shape a lasting ceremonial center. Today, its presence in the Super Valley highlights an independent path of architectural innovation in the Andes and demonstrates that the earliest American civilizations developed their own solutions to the challenges of their environment. Click on the next video.